Hey everyone, welcome to the first episode of Splash of Color. And today we're going to be learning how to paint the wood grains that we made before. Uh, so uh, if you haven't checked out the wood grain video, uh, go ahead and go now and check that out. Uh, give it a watch and learn how to make these cool wood grain patterns. But now we're going to paint them. So we're going to start things off with uh, the regular plank. Uh, or standard, or I'm, what I'm going to call the standard plank wood grain texture. Uh, and you can see that I have already have my colors laid out for, uh, for the wood. So for this particular style of wood grain, um, I'm going to start off with a mixture of, of raw umber and burnt umber, kind of like equal parts of both. And if you want to know specifically, I'm using the Master's Touch Acrylic Raw Umber and the Master's Touch Acrylic uh, Burnt Umber. Both of these are available at Hobby Lobby. Uh, like I said, they're in uh, equal mixtures of both together. And we're going to use uh, uh, this broad wash brush because I want to cover as much area as I possibly can in as few strokes and get the whole piece covered. So we're going to load up our wash brush. All right, it should be dry now. I'll go ahead and move on to our next color. So what we're going to do next is we're going to add uh, our first gradient color. Now, with, with these organic pieces like woods and, and whatnot, um, you, you want to have a gradient uh, because as an organic thing, it's never just one flat color. Uh, so having that gradient of color in there will give your piece much more de depth and dimensionality. So the next color that we're going to be using is going to be this uh, Burnt Sienna. And it is the Basics Burnt Sienna. I believe I got this from uh, Michael's. So, uh, or maybe it was, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was Hobby Lobby. So I got this from Hobby Lobby also. So um, we're going to take our wash brush again. And what we're going to do is we're not going to load it up. We're only going to kind of get just the tips and I'm going to actually wipe quite a bit of it uh, off. What you're going to do is you're going to kind of lightly brush uh, lightly brush it on your surface You can't see it very well because my camera sucks, but you can kind of see that that gray is starting to come through. So I'm going to go back through it a little bit more, kind of liven up that color a little bit, make it pop a little bit more before we move on to our next color. All right. So there you can see it's kind of gained a little dimensionality got high concentrations of some color you can still see the base of color underneath looks pretty good so to finish it off what we're going to do is we're going to get some of this red ochre artist loft red ochre this is a uh, um, from uh, Michaels and do the same thing like we like what we did with the burnt sienna it's gonna barely get the tips of it uh, of our brush uh, with the paint and with this one, we're not really going to hit the whole surface like we did with the uh, with the burnt sienna. Going to kind of give it some highlight streaks here and there. All right, so there it is, the finished colors for the standard plank wood grain. Next up, we're going to be painting this style of wood grain. Now, what's different about this is that uh, there are going to be two primary base colors for this piece, uh, well, for this style of wood grain. So in these areas between the grain lines, we're going to paint that an off-white color, like what you see here. And then the grain lines themselves are going to be painted a, uh, with the, with the uh, raw and burnt umber. We're going to use the raw umber as the base color. And we're going to accent and highlight with the uh, with the burnt umber. So 
what I'm going to do first is I'm going to lay down my uh, inter-grain line base color. I'm going to use my, uh, we're going to be using uh, warm gray, this Master's Touch acrylic warm gray for that. Now I'm going to try and avoid getting it into the into the main grain lines as much as I can so I don't have too much uh, cross contamination of color. All right, and there we go. I got the base color for my inter uh, grain areas down. Now I kind of strayed a little bit into the grain lines, but it's not that big of a deal. So next up, we're going to paint our grain, our actual grain line base color. And so uh, for that, we're using this uh, thinner bristled uh, brush in order to do that. So I'm going to get me some of this uh, raw umber and start laying it down in the grain lines. So you'll notice that I got our base color laid down that we have these hard lines uh, between the two areas. Now, like I said earlier, grades are important with organic things like this. So now our next job is to go back through and we're going to mix some of the warm, some of the uh, burnt umber, I'm sorry, some of the raw umber and the warm gray. And we're going to blend these lines between the two. All right, so there we go. We got our blended lines like that. Now, I do want to note, it took me a little bit longer than I expected, but what I did was, um, so laid down the, the layers of lines and soften each one individually. And so we have the, uh, we, we had the base color of the, of the raw umber. And then what I did was I took uh, some raw umber mixed with the uh, warm gray with a uh, a lot of the raw umber mixed with a little of the warm gray to make it you know um, more of this color and then blended those lines and a lot of the blending actually comes with using your finger to actually kind of rub those lines together and you want to use a brush like this and you're really going to kind of press and you're going to get some color on there, but wipe a lot of it off. It's more like dry brushing. And you're going to just kind of really push and blend those lines together. And then after that color, I mixed uh, a lot of the warm gray and a little of the burnt umber together. And that got me my umber uh, warm gray mix. And then use that to blend the line further. And then if I wanted to go back and add some more warm gray in the... Uh, inner grain line to make that a little bit lighter I have that too so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take the uh, burnt umber and go back into my primary into my uh, main grain lines and add some highlights and uh, 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 gradient color in there I'm going to go back through in the inner grain line area and add streaks of my two different colors of off-white. Now, this is warm gray mixed with the Master's Touch yellow ochre. 
And this color right here is warm gray mixed with yellow ochre deep, the artist loft kind. So go ahead and start doing that and giving this piece even more dimension. All right, and there we go. Pretty cool looking. All right, and now the third and final uh, bit of wood is the aged uh, uh, aged barn wood or aged just general aged wood kind of look that uh, we made. Looks a little like that. For the base color, what we're going to do is we're going to lay down this uh, Master's Touch Neutral Gray, and this will serve as our primary base color. We're going to use our wash brush. We're going to cover the whole surface. All right. And now we have our base color down. This is uh, using the, the neutral gray for the whole surface. Now what we're going to do next is take some neutral gray mixed with some white, just a little bit of white, and we're going to uh, then use that with also with our, our wash brush. But instead of covering the whole surface, we're going to do like what we did with the standard plank and just kind of uh, hit more, uh, a little less of the surface area uh, with the uh, lightened uh, neutral gray. So there we go. We have some highlight areas. Next, what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to take our smaller bristle brush and we're, uh, brush, <laughs> brush, and we're going to use our white, specifically Master's Touch Titanium White, and we're going to come back through and streak it and uh, give some uh, focused areas some of that really white highlight. All right, and there we go. Now, it's important to note, if you don't want your wood to be uh, quite this gray or look quite this aged, what you can do is you can mix some burnt umber into your neutral gray and uh, basically get like a grayish brown color uh, or Actually, what I would recommend doing more is having a healthy amount of burnt umber and then taking some of your neutral gray and mixing that in. A little bit more than that, I guess. You can see you start getting... this gray brown color and you want if you want to use that as your base color uh, then uh, that also will work to sell a not quite as aged wood uh, but getting definitely getting their aged wood look and then for the highlighting process you use the, the neutral gray and then the um, for your uh, kind of base highlights and then uh, a your off neutral gray your neutral gray with added white for your uh, further highlights. Now, one last important step uh, in this process is the uh, black wash. Now, usually uh, after I've done all of my layers for my base color and my gradient, I would usually seal it and then I do my black wash, but in this case, it, it should be fine. So for the black wash, what we're gonna do is you're gonna need some paper towel. I'm gonna get your brush clean. Now, some people, uh, well, in terms of, of of washing, there, I refer to it in two different types of washes. I I think of it in terms of uh, a dry wash or a wet wash. Now, in this instance, wash just means that I'm covering it with color. Uh, now, when I say dry wash, what that would mean is I just load my brush up with color and just put that on uh, from the brush itself. But with a wet wash, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put uh, color on my on my a healthy amount of color on my on my wash brush, and then before I put it on, I'm going to dip it in my uh, water and then apply it. So you get a nice uh, wet application of the paint. Uh, to the to the piece you're working on so 
Get a nice liberal application of black, specifically this permanent black, if it'll focus. <laughs> permanent black uh, for master's touch. I'm gonna dip it in my water. And I'm gonna apply it to the whole surface. You're gonna take your, your uh, paper towel and you're gonna wipe I'm gonna wipe that off. Move a little bit more of that. And there we go. Now, what this does is it brings out your grain lines and actually further blends uh, your colors. Uh, of your piece so it looks even more natural so y'all demonstrate it again just for just for uh, uh, tutorial sake and to demonstrate of the blending uh, that it does I'm gonna do it to this piece which I don't really like how the blending turned out but we'll do a black wash And that should make it look a little bit better. Now, if you black wash too heavy, uh, you still have a lot of black left and you want to get rid of it. What you can do is clean your brush, dip it in water, get a lot of the water off. You just want to have basically a wet brush and kind of go back over your surface without color. And you'll still have black, but you'll also kind of bring your color back out. And there you go. Well, everyone, there it is, the first official video of Splash of Color. I hope you learned something new, and if you didn't learn something new, I hope you were showing a different take or another variation of something you already did that you can now incorporate into your own stuff. Um, I'm going to try and get another episode out here probably next week. Uh, it's probably going to be focusing on metal coloring, <coughs> just to... Um, as serve as another companion for the tutorial that I've already made about metal texturing. So that'll be coming out next week. Uh, here soon we're going to try and start doing like build uh, videos and maybe even start live streaming some of that stuff too because I have some projects coming up that I'm working on, uh, both coming up and work, uh, working on right now that I think you guys would be interested in seeing the process of. So I'm going to try and get those filmed and posted up too. It just depends on when I can get to the filming uh, in between uh, those projects. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, be sure to do the whole like and subscribe uh, thing to uh, be aware of when I post videos so you can keep watching and keep learning because I love making these things for you guys because uh, I really love uh, teaching people how to make this sort of stuff. It's uh, become a real passion of mine. So uh, definitely do that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can, uh, which, I mean, uh, shouldn't be too long. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, let's get out in the shop and make something cool.